coal gas occasion in the local history from an article in the Evening Post uh, back in January of last year. Uh, and one of the important things that I noted from that article was that Mr. Clough said, there is no threat to the environment or individuals. And I think that's the issue of safety or of environment, potential environmental damage is really important uh, when you consider that what we're talking about here is the Lucker Estuary. So it's worth spending a little time considering that aspect. At about the same time as this article was printed, the state government in Queensland, Australia, were becoming rather concerned about some of the things that were happening there. And they had uh, three companies there who were um, planning to do underground coal gasification in the area, um, in the area of their state, and they um, had been working on it for some time. Um, doing the test drillings and demonstrations and things like that. But um, there had been a number of problems. There had been a serious accident, a large explosion, and more, um, more well known, there had been a, a toxic spillage which led to um, people arguing uh, in court as to who had the right to do what. So they commissioned an independent scientific panel to report on the process. And as a result of that report, on the 8th of July last year, ABC News reported that the Queensland government had decided to delay the commercial development of underground coal gasification for the time being. Now here are some of the statements that appeared in the press at the time. And if you read those two statements, you'll see that the government was asking quite a simple question really. Prove to us that you can do this safely and we'll let you go ahead. I'll just give you a moment to read those. Can you move out of the way so we can't see them? So how do you think the UCG companies operating in Queensland responded to this? Somebody's read my script. <laughs> well, they huffed and they puffed and they tried to blow the house down by threatening to sue. But the state government stood firm and refused to budge. So then they threw their toys out of the pram and they cried foul and they accused the government of not playing fair. But they didn't answer the question. Instead, they packed up and went off to play somewhere else where the rules are not so strict and where governments don't ask awkward questions. Now, if Cooper Energy and Carbon Energy and Link Energy, with all their supposed years of experience with UCG, are unwilling or unable to show that this process can be done without harm to the environment or individuals, I'd like to know, does Mr. Clough know something they don't? Back to the article in the Evening Post. The article said that the company conceded that the UCG process generates similar levels of carbon dioxide to conventional coal burning, but that the carbon dioxide could be trapped and then buried or supplied to oil companies. This obviously refers to a process known as carbon capture and storage, which was mentioned earlier um, by, I think, the first speaker. Now the question of carbon capture and storage came up during questions to the Prime Minister in the House of Commons on the 5th of June last year. In answer to a question about why he had voted against an amendment to introduce binding carbon reduction targets, the Prime Minister replied, but does it make sense to fix a decarbonisation target now before we have agreed the carbon budget and before we even know whether carbon capture and storage works properly, it does not work. Those are the Prime Minister's words recorded in Hansard. Now, actually, carbon capture and storage is not rocket science. <laughs> Anyone can do it. It's a simple chemical process. But the problem is that it takes more energy to get the carbon dioxide out than you get from the, at, at the end of the process. Plus, it's quite expensive. 
Then there's a the problem of what to do with the carbon dioxide um, when you remove it. So more energy required, more expense. There are lots of pilot and demonstration projects working on carbon capture around the world. But the general feeling is that a commercially viable industrial scale process is decades away. Which is why one of this government's first acts when they came to power was to pull the funding for the UK pilot project. So, Mr. Clough, what are you planning to do with all that carbon dioxide? Do you know something that the Prime Minister doesn't? In a more recent article in the Evening Post, Mr. Clough was quoted to say that gasifying the coal under the Locker Estuary would be in the national interest. Tricky phrase that, national interest. The moment you try to analyse what someone means by that, you step into a bit of a minefield. For example, every political party in Britain has a different opinion as to what is the national interest. And the same is probably true on an individual level. Um, we probably all have our own ideas about what is the national interest. Now I understand that Mr Clough is quite close to the Conservative Party and therefore close to the current government. So it may help us to understand what he means by the national interest if we take a look at what interests of what the interests of the government might be. Now I, I appreciate this is a very complicated um, slide. And, um, but it shows some of the relationships between the current government and the oil and gas industry. <laughs> now, up at the top here, two people at the top, the uh, gentleman on my left, um, if this were a pack of cards, he would be our ace of spades. This is Lord John Brown, former chairman of BP, currently chairman and 30% owner of Quadrilla, a company involved in fracking operations in Lancashire and Vulcan. Dubbed the UK's fracking czar by campaign group Frackoff, he currently works in the Cabinet Office. Now, our Queen of Space would be the lady next to him, Baroness Hogg. She's a senior director for gas exploration and production at BG Group. That's a shale gas operator working in both the USA and Australia. She's also a senior non-executive director at the UK Treasury. The Department